on today's episode of the K-Swap 240 presented by Turn 14 Distribution. We put the K24 back in the engine bay and we show you how to build a titanium intake. Well, PT, this should go a little easier than it did with the S2000. I think so. We've done this a couple times already. Yeah. At NV Auto, I think we, what were we up to? I think we're at seven or eight. Seven I, or eight, yeah. I can't remember, but. So, this is the first time the full motor is complete. Everything is bolted in. Before I get to mounting up our custom transmission bracket that Vin at NV made us, I've gone ahead and made yet another upgrade and that this time it is to the transmission mounts. On the right side here, your left, we've got our factory BMW mount and I read these are notorious for being too compliant and too soft. You can see a ton of deflection. So I went out and bought rogue engineering ones. And these ones, as you can see, much stiffer, are much better for track use. They're actually made of neoprene rubber. You can see the difference in the shape. This is an hourglass. This is just a full cylindrical one. So it takes up a ton of that slop, which is exactly what we're looking for in this setup. Progress is happening. And I was just about to bolt up the throttle body. And then I noticed this. Can you guys see what is wrong with this picture? We've got a new gasket. It's sealed. However, there's a staple through it. I mean, fail. I know this isn't from Honda. So this is the dealership that I bought this from. Somebody was using a stapler. I don't even know why there's two staples in it. see we have a bit of a clearance issue with the factory heat shield on the top of the S2000 exhaust manifold here. It's fouling on the VTEC solenoid on the K24 because it's not designed to go with that. So we thought about like hammering this end in, but it's at such a strong point on the shape of the shield here. I think we'll have a hell of a time trying to hammer it in. So I think we're just going to chop it off and then it'll bolt up. There'll be a bit of a gap there, but I mean, it's still going to function extremely well as a heat shield from, you know, radiant heat in the engine bay. So to the bandsaw PT. That's what I was thinking. After that PT chop job, she just clears the holes it's in there. Line up. Your marks were pretty good. All right. There we are. Would you look at that? It looks so good. It's almost complete. It's all bolted in. It's like it's ready to start, but we're still a couple things away from that. And the next item that we're gonna be working on is going to be very, very cool. One of the last items that we have to build is a custom intake. And I think six months ago, I saw Vibrant came out with a lineup of titanium parts. So I thought, what better way to build something that'll be really cool and it'll be a standout piece in the engine bay than a titanium intake. So we have ordered up some vibrant three inch straight titanium. Mm, so light. I know, very, very light. And that's kind of the beauty of it is it's light, it's strong. And these, believe it or not, are 45 degree pie cuts. So they come in this type of flavor and you put them together and you can have 45 degrees out of one box, but we've put two together here to have 90. And as you can see, I've already kind of mocked up what our intake could potentially look like. And now it's gonna be the task of trying to figure out how to make this work in the area that we have here and bring it downwards and make it a cold air intake. One of the issues that we're facing here is how tight our throttle body is to our belt. 
and as you can see if I put it on straight then it touches so we're gonna have to do this kind of cheating thing where it's a little bit um, off center yeah. but not a huge deal and um, ideally we want to kind of bring this radius in a bit so I think I'm gonna try to sand a bunch of these yeah the inner lip is much lower on the ground yeah side. and it's just a little like a bit half inch lower tighter radius as well so I think that's going to work now I am not a professional so I'm not even going to attempt to weld this stuff what I'm doing is I'm going to tack it and then afterwards we're going to take when I've built this whole system we're going to take it over to Aaron at Vibrant Performance and he's going to show me how to properly weld this give you guys some tips as well I did it. Whoop. It's rolling away, but it's, oh yeah. Look at that. Looks pretty good. There it is. Not bad, PT. You didn't blow a hole through it anyway. No. It's actually not that difficult. Check that out. This thing is just about done. I have one last small little item to make and that is a bracket that's going to hold this intake in place because right now it is a little loose. We don't want it shaking around like that. That could cause some problems. So I'm gonna take one of these exhaust hangers from Vibrant, these are titanium ones of course, and I'm gonna flatten it, bend it, drill a hole in it, and we should be good. Check that out, this titanium tubing flattens like an absolute champ just a couple hits with the hammer and there it is and now i've got something i can work with there we have it my titanium intake is almost complete there's one last step and that is to actually weld this whole thing up so now we jump over to vibrant's r d center here we are at the r d center this is california j from vibrant and he's going to be doing all of the welding here because as i mentioned before I'm just not up to the task. <laughs> and Jay, the one thing I did learn is when it's nice and tight, the weld is great. But when it's got a gap like this, well, I did burn a few spots, as you can see here and here with my inexperience. And I think that's A, from not yeah. having these gaps closed in and B, just because there was too much amperage. Yeah, maybe a little too much amperage and fit up is very crucial with titanium because it is so thin, so the margin for error, error is like none. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looks so like it. when you get like a tight, uh, like a tight gap, like you said here, you're gonna have a really easy job tacking it together, getting it mocked up, but you can't have gaps like this. Okay, so I've got pretty much everything I need except for welding rod handy here, and I'm gonna set this up for purging because we need this to have a totally inert atmosphere inside the tube. Um, so quick rundown of what my setup is. I've just got my Miller welder set up for uh, a back purge. So I got a purge plug, some tin foil for the other end of the tube. Uh, I got my gloves handy for when I get welding. Uh, I got my amperage set for roughly 35 to 40. I'm probably gonna be feathering That's the pedal. Oh wow, okay. Yeah, so uh, it's really thin material, right? And yep. it's very porous, but it's, uh, its strength is really high. That's why it's everybody's everybody's after it. I've got this purging now for about a good two, three minutes. I got all my stuff together. I wiped it down. Yeah. And I'm gonna try and bridge Fill these holes. Bridge the Grand Canyon here <laughs> yeah. of gaps. Well, on this end, <clears throat> you've got it nicely tacked through through the whole bend, but I want to uh, add another row of tacks here and there just to stabilize Strength. and minimize the amount of warp yeah. that we might have. I did find that was a big problem with it. If you tacked it on one side, then the other side would open up a little bit, so you almost want to go around before you actually yep. start welding. Yeah. So I'm going to do a row here and then maybe a row on the outside 
because you've got a row and a row on that side. So that lined everything up, but for when you really get into welding and doing the patterns, um, you want to have it as stable as possible. So adding a few more tacks on every joint is key. Surprisingly, that makes a lot of sense. It does. All right, I've got uh, roughly about two inches welded on my first uh, pie cut. Since I don't have a trailer, a trailer is a piece that keeps argon shield over more part of the weld path after you weld. So it keeps the cooling uh, weld uh, covered in argon as you're still progressing. Um, since we don't have one of those, and those are really expensive for most people, you know, welding titanium for the first time or any time, um, just using a big cup that gets lots of coverage and doing a one inch at a time weld patterns keeps your discoloration to a low. A good tip is to count the amount of dabs you do to say like eight or ten, stop, and then let it cool for a bit and then keep going again. Look at this. Is this not beautiful or what? DP. It's a bit of work. Wow, it's amazing. Jay, Jay. lost five pounds in sweat on that job. I, yeah, I know, thank you so much. This did take a long time. Yeah, it does take a long time. It takes the most amount of focus. I mean, you've got a lot, you've got maybe what, 20 passes? Here. Oh goodness, yeah. 20 seams. And uh, so you have to be in a certain mindset when you sit down to do this. And if you're in a rush, you're not gonna have a great outcome, but if you can sit down and take your time, everything will come together yeah. with some practice. And the piece is absolutely superb. Like, yeah. look at the result of this. The pretty. colors are so nice, DP. Oh, I can't wait to put this back on the car, and that is the next thing we're gonna do. We all know that titanium changes color when it's heated. So the guys at Titanium or at uh, Vibrant gave me this scrap piece of titanium metal, and I took the torch to it. Trying to change it to that cool blue hue. What do you think, DP? I, I think like it, it turned out pretty cool. Yeah, it looks great. So we're gonna attempt it on my intake here. And I think I'd like to add some blue hues right around this area to, to kind of almost showcase of it coming together and where we're all the hot blended heat. in. Through yeah, it was yeah. there like a full blend. Mm -hmm. What I learned on my practice piece is you don't necessarily want to heat one area. I kind of want to go back and forth until you start getting like the color you want and then just move on to the next area. But it does take a little bit of time to heat it up. You can see it's starting to change color right now. Let me get that golden hue. There's that purple. Yeah. Move it on here. something that uh, I added off camera. I didn't want to bore you guys. I actually welded this up with Greg and Vibrant. And that's actually a hanger, a hollow hanger. That's Two right, it's like a hollow hanger too. And, oh, DP, look at the color! Oh, oh. Woo Done! Woo like a Picasso here. Look at that bullseye, buddy. Woo! Bam! Man. Making some intake magic happen. All right, let's move on to here. A little hot there. Careful. See, you gotta, careful. you do have to be careful. You do yeah, because yeah, yeah. See, I've, I've passed that point now there where it's it cleared out. Yeah. This is how you learn, PT. Exactly. Learn by doing. This is how the internet learns. Yes. So you guys won't make the mistakes we do. So a couple lessons learned here, as you can see, I did this side, and uh, here. There was a bit of contamination. I made sure to clean all of this with acetone before I ended up doing this because I know how sensitive the titanium is to oils or any type of dirt. Uh, so you can see there's a couple spots like in this area right here that there was some type of contamination so it didn't work mm -hmm. well. Uh, 
otherwise it, it's kind of tough it's not as easy like this side went really really well yeah and this side here you can see i kind of uh overheated a few I spots botched it in a couple spots but i was trying to maintain the same thing so hmm. much like anything it's kind of an organic ish process which yeah. means you know you're not going to be able to repeat it perfectly every time so Just get a rotisserie and, yeah uh, well a rotisserie know, build a, lab, a robot build and this will go around exactly. and you'll be perfect yeah yeah, yeah 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 that's that's what we're all doing here is do-it-yourself mechanics but all in all, I think from the before and after, this thing looks look so cool. much cooler. Yeah. Aside from this little small botched area, yeah, which is going to bug me, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Character, Peter. It's got character. Damn it, damn it. One of the first things that I did was replace our old vibrant coupler with a new black one. I think it looks way better. So let's see how this is going to fit up and look. Oh, man. How cool is that, DP? This is exactly what is I was looking for. Pretty wild, I like it. I think it'll be a real showpiece. Uh, I did originally want to use my AEM air filter after a little bit further inspection. This came out of the stash. It's well worn, so I talked to the guys at Vibrant, and of course they had a pretty awesome solution. Uh, this is a velocity stack, and these are known to pick up power on K motors. I think like what three to four on the dyno yeah, typically. so it's a, a great little addition and of course they've got the filter to match and our coupler so we're going to put this all together and finalize the install here and see how it looks so here we have our recirc line from our catch can this was some half inch heater hose from vibrant and one of their fittings and what do you guys think look at that the intake is complete it's on, I just used a small little rubber grommet on this side here to hold it in place. So it is there, we've got our velocity stack and filter. We can finally cross off the intake and there's only two things left. A drive shaft, which we have the guys at Excessive Manufacturing making and wiring, which Nam from NV Auto is going to take care of. So this car will start hopefully pretty soon. We are almost down to the, the final stages of this build. And then we can go get it tuned and hit the racetrack. So thank you for watching. As always, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and hit it the notification bell as well. And if you're looking for merchandise, check out speedacademy.shop. We should mention these mounts are only $59, PT. $59.99 $59 at Rogue Engineering. Get yours today.